the founder of Timonic Cultivation, an English translation by Fon E. E. 33, read by Luna Minerva. Chapter 3, Aggression, Part 2. Wei Wuxian's first thought was that perhaps the Lan youth's flag formation contained mistakes. If the things he invented weren't deployed with the utmost care, they had a habit of producing disaster. That was why he had especially checked that their yin summoning flags were error-free. Stiffening as several powerful arms began hauling him outside, Wei Wuxian allowed himself to be dragged so he wouldn't have to waste energy walking. When the mob finally arrived at the eastern hall, it was quiet, a marked contrast to daytime, despite the fact that there were hardly fewer people now than there had been then. Every household servant and family member had come, some still in their sleeping clothes, sporting nests of tangled hair, eyes terror-stricken. Lady Moa sat paralyzed, as though she had just awoken from a nightmare her cheeks streaked with tear stains. The corners of her eyes were still watering when Wei Wuxian was hauled in. Immediately, her glimmering, sorrow-filled gaze began to shine with a vengeance's chilly light. On the ground laid what appeared to be a human body, draped in a white cloth that left only the head showing. Lan Sijue and a few of the other Lan juniors surrounded it, bent over in scrutiny, speaking in whispers, grave expressions etched onto their young faces. Their words were just loud enough to leak into Wei Wuxian's ears. He was discovered less than half an hour ago? Immediately after we finished dealing with the walking corpses, we rushed over here and found his body lying in the hall. The body belonged to Mo Yuan. Wei Wuxian's eyes swept quickly over the corpse, but, drawn back again, his gaze couldn't help but linger. The corpse did resemble Mo Yuan, yet it also did not. The shape of his face, his eyes, nose and lips clearly belonged to the young man, but his cheeks had been hollowed out, his eyes and eye sockets protruded grotesquely from the plane of his face, and his skin was parched and wrinkled. Compared to the youthful, round-faced Mo Yuan of yesterday, it was as though he had aged a couple of decades in the course of the night. All his blood and flesh had been sucked dry, rendering him nothing more than a thin husk wrapped around a frame of bone. The living Mo Yuan had been ugly. Mo Yuan's corpse was not only ugly, but decrepit. Wei Wuxian was still scrutinizing the body when Lady Mo suddenly charged toward him. In her hand a dagger flashed, gleaming with the cold moonlight. Lan Sijue, sharp-eyed and deft of hand, blocked the incoming strike before it landed. Before the youth could open his mouth, Lady Moore shrieked. My son died a terrible death tonight. I must avenge him. What are you doing? Why are you trying to stop me? Once more, Wei Wuxian hid behind Lan Sijue. Squatting, he said, What does your son's death have to do with me? During the daytime, Lan Sijue had watched Wei Wuxian make a scene in the eastern hall, and then heard the garishly embellished rumors concerning the poor man swirling through everyone's mouths. Fully of immense sympathy, he couldn't help but defend him. I'm very, very sorry this occurred, Lady Mo, but the state of your son's corpse, the fact that his blood, flesh and spirit have been sucked dry, means that he must have been killed by a demon. Your nephew couldn't have done it. Lady Mo's chest heaved as she spoke. What do you people know? This lunatic's dad is a cultivator. Of course he's learned all kinds of evil tricks. Lan Sijue turned and glanced back at the apparently shell-shocked Wei Wuxian. That's, um, Lady Mo, you don't have proof, so let's... The proof is on my son's body. She stabbed her finger at the corpse lying on the ground. Look at it yourself. Ah Yuan's remains have already told us who the killer is. Without hesitation, Wei Wuxian snatched the edge of the white cloth and pulled it away revealing the entirety of Mo Yuan's corpse. Yet something was missing. His entire left arm, from right under his shoulder, had severed itself from the rest of his body, grown wings and flown away. See? Lady Mo said. Today, right here, 
Didn't you all hear what he said? That lunatic said that if I you and touched his things again, he would chop off his arm. Overcome with emotion, she covered her face as she sobbed. But my poor Ayuan never touched any of that lunatic's things in the first place. Not only did he throw around baseless accusations against my son, now that deranged bastard murdered him in cold blood. Deranged, deranged bastard. bastard! In, in cold, cold blood. blood! How many years had it been since Wei Wuxian last heard comments like these lobbed his way? They were almost like old friends. He pointed at himself, but he had no reply to give. He wasn't even sure whether the problem laid with him or with Lady Moore. He had made plenty of outlandish threats when he was young, that he would extinguish entire families, entire clans, that he would vanquish millions and blood would flow in great rivers and dye the lands and seas red, that sort of thing. But most of the time they had been empty threats, said only for the sake of saying them. If he could actually do those things, he would have long enjoyed dominion over the entire world of cultivation. On the other hand, Lady Moore wasn't trying to avenge her son. She was only trying to find someone upon whom she could vent hateful fury. He wasn't going to further entangle himself with her. After a moment of pondering, he stuck out his hand, groped around Mo Ziyuan's chest, and pulled out a piece of folded-up black fabric. Spreading it out, he found that it was a yin summoning flag. In a fraction of a second, his heart flashed with ice, and he muttered, You were your own victim. How can someone like you expect to live? Once Lan Sijue saw what Wei Wuxian had pulled from Mo Ziyuan's chest, he also understood what had in fact happened. Viewed in light of the day's ruckus, it wasn't difficult to guess the chain of events. Mo Ziyuan had been humiliated by Mo Xuan Yu's crazy display and had gone looking for his cousin to get even, his heart brimming with resentment. But Mo Xuan Yu had wandered off outside. No one in the house had caught even a glimpse of his shadow the entire afternoon. Thus, Mo Ziyuan's next plan was to catch his cousin when he returned at night and teach him a lesson while no one was watching. But when night fell and the young man snuck outside, he passed by the western courtyard and caught sight of the yin summoning flags that had been stuck atop the eaves. Even though he had been warned for the upteenth time not to go out in the middle of the night, that the western courtyard was forbidden, and that touching the black flags was even more forbidden, Mo Ziyuan had assumed the land cultivators had only said those frightening things because they were afraid that someone would steal their valuable treasures. Completely unaware of the flag's ominous effects, he inadvertently transformed himself into living bait. His dirty habit of stealing his mentally ill cousin's symbols, seals and spiritual tools had grown into an addiction. As soon as he laid eyes on anything of a similar nature, he became unbearably agitated and couldn't rest until it was in his soiled hands. Taking advantage of their owner's preoccupation with the walking corpses, he quietly plucked one of the flags and took it away. The flag formation required six yin summoning flags. Five remained in the western courtyard, drawing all manner of dark creatures towards the land youth. But they were protected by the many spiritual tools they carried, whereas Mo Zi Yuan, though only in possession of a single flag, had nothing to keep himself safe. Like most other predators, Evil spirits went for the softest, easiest flesh, so naturally they were drawn to the defenseless youth. If there had only been walking corpses tonight, that would have been one thing. He probably would have suffered a few bites at most and couldn't have died in less than half an hour. Quite unfortunately, however, the flag had unintentionally attracted something far more frightening than a few walking corpses. It was precisely this unknown evil spirit who had killed Mo Ziyuan and robbed him of his arm. Wei Wuxian raised his wrist to his face and found that the cut on his left hand had healed. It seemed that the sacrificial contract had indeed tacitly recognized Mo Ziyuan's death as the product of his hard work. After all, he had invented and popularized the use of the summoning flags. Even if it had been a bit roundabout and accidental, he could be perfectly well said to have killed Mo Xuanyu's cousin. 
though Lady Moa knew somewhere deep in her heart that her son had a few little problems, she absolutely refused to acknowledge that he had played any role in his own death. At once stricken by anxiety and shame, she grabbed a teacup and charged Wei Wuxian, hurling it at his face. If you hadn't made a scene and slandered him in front of so many, would he have gone outside at midnight? Your deranged attack caused all of this to happen. Wei Wuxian had long expected her to strike at him and easily dodged and hid. Lady Moa then charged at Lan Sijue, screeching. And you! You heard of useless things! You came here as cultivators to excise evil spirits. But what cultivation? What exorcism? You couldn't even protect a child! Ayuan was only in his teens! The Lan juniors were still young and hadn't had more than a couple of real-life experiences expelling walking corpses, so had not cottoned on to the fact that something here was strange until it was too late. They had no idea that there would be an evil spirit so vicious and fierce. At first, they had been guilt-stricken, believing they had made some kind of oversight. Subject to such savage abuse from a woman so ignorant she couldn't tell black from white and blue from red, they began to develop a sickly complexion. Since they had been born into a highly distinguished clan, they had never encountered anyone who dared treat them so terribly. Yet neither could they defend themselves. The teachings of the Gusu Lan clan were extremely strict, and it was an unbreachable taboo to raise a hand against an ordinary person who could not fight back. In fact, they weren't even permitted to be rude. Thus, though their hearts tossed and turned with unhappiness, they all forced it down, suffocating themselves until their faces were tinged with green. Wei Wuxian found the scene unbearable. After so many years, the Lan family is still like this, he thought to himself. They are still affecting that stupid, undying self-restraint. <laughs> Watch this. He spat at Lady Moa and said, Who the hell do you think you're screaming at? Do you think they're your servants? These people traveled through half the country in order to help you for free. What exactly do they owe you? How old is your honorable son? He should be at least seventeen this year, right? And he's still a child? How old does he have to be to understand human speech? Yesterday, didn't these cultivators say several times not to touch anything or approach the western courtyard? Because your son couldn't stop himself from pilfering what isn't his, as though he were a starving dog stealing chickens in the night. You're blaming me? You're blaming them? Lan Jing Yi and the others exhaled, and their complexions began to return to a healthy color. On the other hand, Lady Mo, both heartbroken and resentful to the extreme, thought only of the word death. Not of her own death, of course, she had no desire to accompany her son. Rather, she thought of the death of every other human being on earth, especially the people in front of her. Following her habit of ordering around her husband, she grabbed him and said, Call everyone in, every single person. Perhaps shaken by the loss of his only son, he pushed her without warning. Lady Mo toppled to the floor, stunned. In the past, she hadn't even needed to touch her husband to make him follow her orders. If she only raised her voice a little, he would do whatever she wanted. But today he had the temerity to strike back. All of the servants grew white with terror as they saw Lady Mo's expression. Trembling, A Ding helped her up. Lady Mo, shaking and clutching her hand in front of her chest, said, You! You piss off, too! Her husband behaved as though he had not heard her. A Ding ran to A Tong and shot him several meaningful glances. But A Tong, unable to endure the chaos, was busy attempting to drag the master of the house outside. Once the household had finally quieted down, Wei Wuxian prepared to inspect the body again. But before he was able to catch more than a glimpse, another blood-curling shriek pierced the air, slashing its way from a courtyard through the doors of the eastern hall. Everyone inside surged towards the exit. All they found were two bodies on the ground, twitching and spasming. One was A Tong, who sat paralyzed but still alive. The other had fallen and looked as though all of his blood and flesh had been sucked clean off of his bones. 
His skin was wrinkled and withered, and though his left arm had already disappeared, no blood trickled from where it was once attached. The state of his corpse was exactly like that of Mo Tsi Yuan's. Lady Mo had just shaken off A Ting's supportive arm when she saw the fallen body. Her eyes grew wide and numb. All the fury fueled strength within her finally expired. Her world grew faint, and she toppled toward the ground. As Wei Wuxian happened to be standing near her, he caught her before she struck the stony floor, then passed her off to A Ding, who had rushed forward to help. He glanced at his right hand and found that another gash had vanished. Lady Mo's husband had barely left the eastern hall before perishing right where all the crowd now stood, and it had all happened in the blink of an eye. Even many among the Lan juniors had gone white. Lan Sijue was the first to compose himself. He hurriedly asked the paralyzed A Tong, Did you see what it was? Unable to pry open his mouth out of terror, A Tong would not answer no matter how many times Lan Sijue asked, but only shook his head without end. His heart burning with urgency, Lan Sijue allowed the other servants to carry A Tong inside, then turned to Lan Jing Yi and said, Did you fire the signal? Yeah, I fired it, Lan Jing Yi replied. But I'm afraid if there aren't any seniors in the area who can rescue us, it'll take our people at least an hour to get here, even if they rush. What shall we do? We don't even know what it is. Of course, neither could the Lan juniors flee. If, upon encountering an evil spirit, the juniors of any clan deserted the scene, caring to protect only themselves, then not only would they bring great embarrassment upon their clan, so much shame would hang around their necks that they could never again look anyone in the eye. The terrified members of the Moa household couldn't flee either. The evil spirit would most likely hide itself among them, rendering the effort completely pointless. Gritting his teeth, Lan Sijue said, Be on alert and wait for help to come. Once the rescue signal was fired, it would not be long before other cultivators came to offer support. In order to avoid an incident arising over his rebirth, Wei Wuxian's most reasonable course of action would have been to disappear into the night. If whoever came didn't recognize him, all would be well, but if they happened to be someone he had once known or fought, who knew what could happen? On the other hand, the curse was still on his body, so he wasn't able to go far. Moreover, the thing that had been summoned was unusually ferocious. It had robbed two people of their lives in such a brief period of time. If Wei Wuxian departed so carelessly, by the time help came, Mo Manor might already have enough corpses to line an entire street, among them a few of the Kusulan clan's children by blood, each missing a left arm. After pondering this problem for a little while, Wei Wuxian thought, The faster the battle, the faster the outcome. Time to act.